Hello. Let me take you to the workshop and I will show you how I built my first ever building, Link's house from Breath of the Wild. Here we are at the epicenter of chaos that is my workbench. First things first, I marked out the footprint of the design on a piece of chipboard from the back of a huge watercolour pad and then I used some IKEA packaging to form the raised bits of ground around the side of the house. Shallow passes with a standing knife were the way forward with such thick cardboard. Then I had a block of polystyrene. I will spare you the pain of hearing me cut that with a scalpel, uh, which I used for the sloping section at the front of the house. Now, if I'd had some XPS sheets, I would have used those, but the only thing I had was Hobbycraft foam board. Luckily, the paper did peel off, but not all that easily. As it happens, uh, it was only for the rustic looking roof tiles, so it didn't really matter. I need to investigate where to get XPS foam in the UK that doesn't cost an absolute bomb. Uh, here you can see me adding that good old Black Magic Craft Mod Podge and Black Paint Concoction to help make it sturdy and waterproof. I cut the foam board for the little roof on the side uh, and then in much the same way as I'd made the main roof details I used various sculpting tools um, usually meant for polymer clay but uh, that angled flat blade you'll see in a minute really helped um, to press in the lines and evoke that rustic roof tile look I was going for. Uh, nothing was measured because balsam building doesn't really strike me as super accurate anyway. Um, passionate yes but not not all that accurate. Then I covered that with Mod Podge. Here I'm adding air dry clay to the Mod, Co Mod Podge coated base. That's really hard to say. Um, I also made a weird mush with some PVA glue to make it tougher and more spreadable. And when I coated the areas that will be covered with grass, I textured it all with some aluminium foil. Uh, that done and dry, I painted it in varying shades of green before coating it again with Mod Podge to seal it and add strength since I only used chipboard for the base. It worked fine, but I did have to cover the underside of the base with a layer of PVA glue to help stabilize the warping that obviously happened. There you can see the indents in the air dry clay where the support struts for that little lean-to shelter will be glued in later. I didn't have any footage of making the chimney, uh, but I used cardstock again and then took these little matchsticks and tacky glued them on to add some more detail. I then pressed in the tiles for the chimney's roof and black mod podged it. To add the plaster texture to the whole of the house and to bring out the bare stone sections I used this Fluger acrylic medium and then stippled it with a sponge to get the effect of stucco. If I were to make this again, I would have cut out and glued on individual bricks at the corner, but the house itself isn't hugely 3D in the game and the walls are pretty flush with the cornerstones. All in all, it worked out okay, especially since I didn't have any XPS foam. Egg carton would have worked really well here too. Here you can see that everything has been textured. Uh, the, su the supports are made of cardboard and also needed some woody roughness, so they got some fluger too. After giving everything a basic base coat in brick brown or ivory or grey, I went over the bricks and built up a layer of colour uh, and detail to make them feel more dimensional than they actually were. Um, I also finished with a dark wash and a light dry brush. At 
this point, I thought I was happy with the roof, so I added a wash. Turns out I wasn't happy with it, and after looking at the roof in the game, I realised uh, it was more stylized and had more variation in colour. So I added different colour tiles and then reapplied the wash. This little outbuilding is possibly my favourite bit. Uh, I tried to simulate the end grain of the log sections with these bits of foam cut and shaped with a scalpel, uh, pressed some wood grain into the window frame and used coffee stir sticks with tacky glue to create the facing for the side. Um, I cut them down after they'd dried. And here's the finished door that doesn't need to open since you can't access it in the game normally. So I made it out of foam. I went back in uh, and added even more detail and texture to the roof um, after applying all the flocking. I don't have footage of applying the flocking, but you can see in the close-ups that I used clump foliage, tufts, flowers, and static grass of one kind or another. I don't have an applicator, which makes it all look a bit flattened, but mostly I'm pleased with it. I still need to add little details like the lamp outside the front door, the vine that grows over the porch and a Lynx house sign. So if you're interested in seeing that, leave me a comment and I'll make sure to post it on my Instagram. I made the wood pile out of small hobby twigs and larger stir sticks and the windows were made with matchsticks and UV resin uh, attached to the walls with CA glue. The house actually comes apart in two sections, which you can see in the roof line. Um, so technically I could make all of the inside too, should I? If that's something that you'd really like to see then please let me know in the comments and I will do it. While the glamour shots still roll, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing my first build on this scale. I made the light up Breath of the Wild shrine, but this is definitely the biggest bit of terrain I've built before. I'm very new to sharing my videos. So uh, if you'd like to help me out by leaving a like, subscribing, and maybe sharing this video too, it would be hugely appreciated. Um, take care, and I'll see you soon for your next visit to the Goblin Cave. <laughs>